we're back. Welcome to uh, another new year. Happy new year to everybody. So this is our first job back. Um, patio. So come here, Frank. Just show you what we've got going on. So all that patio there is coming up. Look. All this here where I'm stood is coming up. This is going to be artificial grass. Right through at the back. We just show them around the back here there, Frank. All that there is going to be artificial grass up to the fence, up to the garage. And then we've got an edge in of the same patio slab as what we're going to be putting in there. Come down, look at the patio slab. So what we've got is a Marshall's town gate. So that's what we're going to be using. So that's what it's like wet. And this is what it's like, well, wet. <laughs> this is what it's like dry. So you can see the difference in color between that and that. So that's what you get with Indian sand stuff. Raining cats and dogs in South Wales. So we take this patio up now and you can see how thick that is. I was under the patio, normally you'd expect scalpings, but we've got a concrete base. Fraser's absolutely soaking wet, new Frey. I'm soaking wet, so soak through. There we are. Today is Friday today, so it's our second day here. So we can get on with it. We got absolutely soaked yesterday, so we'll uh, check them out the hype space. you were borrowing from where I started here, look, like the way around, out here. Now we get to this point, and we come out here, so we've dug all that up by hand, no machine yet, all that's ready to rock and roll. We've had permission off the council to put it there, so if anyone asks, we boarded it all out, so we've got a grab wagon coming in now, on Monday morning, so that's all been chucked out there by hand. There's easy 13 ton there, and we'll crack on. So, Whew, yeah, let's do it. So, we've got to do that all over this here, all over that, and all over that set, uh, bottom section there where the shovel is. But we've got a game plan on this now, which all will be revealed in the next little section, so stay tuned, I've had a think about this over the weekend, we've got a little idea, something that we wouldn't normally do, a little idea on how to tackle it, and uh, speak to you about it on the next little bit. Right, so this is the update, so what we've got going on here, I've said this before, look, you can see from that piece of timber, that green piece of timber, there's about, what, 70 mil from there, down to the bottom of the brick, like here I'm talking about, from there. And then when we get down to this side, you know, you're looking at about 300 mil there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer my level because this is the level we're working to here. So I'm going to transfer this level from there right the way down to the bottom. So I'm going to get the patio level from left to right across this way, that way there. And then the fall then is going to be coming from the garage down towards this green fencing. So that's what we're going to do. So in order for me to do that, the brickwork that's already here is out of level. I'm going to have to put a string line up to get the level when I transfer it. And then I'm going to have to cut individual blocks and bricks to make it level on top of the existing brickwork. The customer knows about it. Nobody ever goes out there. She's not really bothered about the appearance of it outside there. So what we're going to do over here, over here right? so once we've got that level transferred to here, we're going to run a string line up here and we're going to raise this where needed as well. So we're going to have a fall coming down there, that's going to be level. And then my little trick, my little idea is, we've taken this off and we, we took tons and tons. It was 13 tons taken away from out there, wasn't it lads? And we're still on the solid ground, it's concrete, but it's a little bit up and down. Just give them the full show, look Brad. There was a couple of slabs for you which we took up to this low bit. Then you've got this concrete bit, then you've got this concrete bit. The customer says this has been built up in stages 
over periods of time because they've had work put on top of work on top of work so we've taken all that apart so what I'm going to do I got some steel mesh for the floor so we're going to put steel reinforcement in the floor and then when that level's built up we've got mix it coming tomorrow with a concrete wagon and we're going to concrete all this and put that on top of the existing concrete with the mesh and I think then that's not going anywhere because if you notice this here is a single skin wall so what we don't really want is a single skin skin wall so when we put the concrete up against it that makes that retaining wall that we're putting in on top stronger again so i think it ticks all the boxes this out here was also a bloody nightmare when we started taking this up out here what we found was um all the concrete that was in this section we didn't even know it was concrete here we thought there was a perimeter wall but it wasn't it was all concrete, but it had all been undermined, all the mud had come away from it. So that was in about three layers, lads, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Three, we took one layer, then there was another layer and another, it just kept going and going and going. Same principle, everything was built on top. So we spoke to the client, came up with an idea, and all this now is secondary, is extra to what we originally thought. So we've clarified that with the client. We put these footings in yesterday, couldn't show you because it's pouring out again. So 150 mil deep these foundations are, 100 mil steps, going to have block on flat up here, so we're retaining with weed poles, and then we're going to build this section up, and the same principle of what I just explained in there, all this then will be gone, we're going to get rid of all this, and then we're going to raise our levels up with scalping, ready for the artificial grass. So there we are, there's the explanation for you, we'll whack you onto uh, hyperspace and you can um, watch us do it. building this little wall down here now Fraser's gonna continue with his training unfortunately we don't lay bricks and blocks every day do we no. so I think if we were he'd come on pretty quick but uh... so we're all ready for concrete up here now you can see what we did yesterday from the uh, hyperspace so all that's in that this side it follows the same fall going down to the uh, to the green fence is what it does over that side so this is all ready for the concrete. We've got the mesh behind me, which I'll show you now. Fraser put this in, or Fraser and I put this in this morning. So that's in, that's done. And uh, Bradley chose these. I didn't choose them. Well, okay then, I chose these wide wheelbarrows by mistake because what we've realized now is you can get your fat ass in the, look at him. 
in the wheelbarrow. You got your legs up on the up on the uh, handles, look. See the headrest, though, look. And uh, yet again, why am I paying you, Brad? <laughs> why do I actually pay you? Look at all this work you've done. What do you mean, all the work you've all done? Right, all the work I've done. <laughs> uh, well, I will leave you guys to decide in the comments below who looks like they're doing all the work. I tell you what, right? There's him there, right? Never very far away from him is his bloody food. What's he got? Tangy cheese puffs. There we are. You've got your phone in your hand for your bloody um, Facebook. Your tangy cheese puffs. What more do you want? Cup of I can't help you with that one. Right, okay, let's get on with it then. So, next bit, we'll put you on a hyperspace when the concrete turns up and uh, show you what we're doing. Oh, them things, the mesh. It's a six mil A142, I think it is, um, from Travis Perkins. So we'll whack a load of them in on there and it'll all, it'll shore it all up and make it stronger because it was a little bit kind of all over the place, so. That was a workout. Oh, I think I'm done for the next six months. That killed me. <laughs> good though, good to have a good workout. So that's all in now. Uh, I haven't looked at the uh, ticket yet. Let's see how many cubes we had in there. Um, we'll have a look at that in a minute. Fraser's got hold of that. So all that's gone in, we've compacted it down, not with a whacker plate. We've compacted it down with the back of the rake and stood on it and gone over it off camera and uh, gone over it with a straight edge and meticulously made sure it's in the place we want it to be. But uh, yeah, we put the reinforcement in and uh, it's been, it came from, mix, from mix it. So it's all a slump test and all that kind of stuff is done on it. All the equations all match coming from the, uh, from mix it, from the, from the proper professionals as opposed to mixing the bell mixer. So it's all good proper stuff. That'll go off rock solid now. And then we can lay straight on top of that, knowing that everything's reinforced. So, happy days. First time I think I've ever done that. So, let me know in the comments below if you've ever done it or what you think about it. Slight change of plan. I whacked it. We went away. We had some food. We came back. It was good. We were walking on it little areas and it was going down a little bit. So, to satisfy my OCD, 
um, and let me have a sleepless night. Uh, let me have a sleepful night rather. I um, I whacked it. So it's gone down a little tiny bit in areas, but nothing much. Nothing we can't make up in the bed. But you can walk on this now, which I will. Just absolutely rock solid now. I just walk across this, and I'm fat as you know. So just turn around there now. No footprints. Absolutely rock solid. So I'm pleased. I'm happy. I can sleep tonight now, knowing that we've done a good job on this. So really pleased. Lay in tomorrow. So see you then. You just had me in stitch. I've been crying. Come on, tell them what you've done. You stood by there, right? And uh, there was a little bit of water coming out of here, like a tiny, tiny. Little... Look at that, Jess. He said, "There's a little bit of water coming out of there." I said, I don't know what to do, he said, because we've um, the water's uh, a little bit frozen coming up the pipe. So he just pulled that there no, no, a little no, bit. No, 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 no. Go on then. Let me tell him because you're gonna you're gonna make me look bad. Turned it off, let the pressure out of the water, pulled it, and then I soaked my sleeve. Hang on, it haven't soaked your sleeve, it's all down there. Oh, wow. It's all up man. there, it's all up over the wall. No, my sleeves wet. I've been round the back. Absolutely my crying went. with that's water. A, I got tears it. rolling down my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna make me look like a mongony. <laughs> it's like what one, two degrees, and you, you, you were so it was your reaction. It was Brad because you just like threw it down on the floor and walked off yeah. towards the van like you were gonna walk home or something. Don't worry, my jacket's in the van. I was wet. <laughs> If you work for Brad for long enough, he does these little things, and uh, when he does, what do I do? Piss yourself laughing. Yeah, exactly. All <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, let's get around the freezer and get on with it then, laugh over. So we got to this point, we've done this off camera. So let me just explain to you very quickly how we've set it out, right? So what we did, obviously you've seen the, the vid, so this has gone off now, absolutely rock solid. You dry off the little hose experience, Brad? Fred sleeve. Wet sleeve, wet sleeve. So what we've done, look right, we've laid our first slab in that corner over there, we transfer the level with the straight edge over to that corner over there, look right, go to the opposite corner, the phrase is showing you now. So that slab and that slab were both level to each other. We pulled a line across, laid the first row, so that was the first row in, and then our Destination up there where we're going to be finished, where the brick is, up here, look, up here, you just about see the string line on there. We pull to that's where we're going to be finishing our patio too. We pull the string line from there down to that slab down there, so you can see the string line up here. So that dictates the string line that side. So now you've got left to right, and you've got up and down done. So what we did then is we transferred this level, the same as what we did on the first row, with the straight edge, over to here. Over to this bit. And then we did, laid the dead man there. And then what we did, we put this green line in from that point up to this point. So we've now got a line on the one side, a line this side, and a line left to right. So how you lay each row is you lay a dead man this side, touching the line and then you put your spaces in we haven't got any space couldn't find any 10 mil spaces anywhere so we're bricklayers so we got 10 mil we pulled up the van you just put them in there for your 10 mil there's your 10 mil spacer do that on everyone so now we pull pull in a string line from here and this is set in stone over here now look these slabs are right they're not dead and we've set a, a string line there so to double check measure from the back of the first slab to the front of this slab they're both the same parallel to each other either side you can't go wrong and then all I'm doing is I'm just running in then pull the line tight because it can't sag in the middle and I'm just pulling the line through and, and laying and bedding up and laying to the line and making sure my 10 mil spacers are right on these sides all the way through job done and the bed is worked out fine so if you look at what we did with here but there's about a 30 mil bed on there right the way through with no discrepancy so it's working out fine lads isn't it mm. and we were just doing uh we we're just having a little chat now about uh we were talking about how successful other people are on youtube and how crap we are basically and uh, we were talking about uh building a and e wasn't we with tony and the lads up there fantastic channel 
and also Steve and Alex. So if you haven't seen those two, give them a watch because they are really worth the uh, the click to get on and, uh, and, and watch them. So have a look at them. But Brad, we were talking about that, about other building channels. And what did Brad say, Frank? I've been looking at a channel up in Scotland that sell cakes all over the UK. Which Scotland did I say? I don't know, whatever. Where did whatever. you say? I don't know, somewhere in, the, somewhere in the UK. Somewhere in the UK. So me and Fraser are watching Build of A&E and Steve and Alex and all the other building channels and stuff like that. And I watch channels about um, cars and fast cars and off-road and stuff like that. And Brad's watching channels about cakes. No, I weren't. I was watching TikToks and there was a random video about cakes. Yeah, he's absolutely full of crap. Aye, and, 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 and I do pretty well. Can't I remember the names of You go onto your video, onto your uh, phone now, Go right? onto my TikToks. And you've got, your web, be... you've got the website for the cake and I bet you've ordered a pack <laughs> of cakes for your bloody self. I wanted to order them, but they were sold out. What did he eat yesterday on his own, Frey? He went to Greg's yesterday morning, <laughs> didn't he? He said, there we are, just as a coffee here for you. There you are, Fraser a coffee. You said, thank you very much. That's very nice of you. All of a sudden, a separate bar came out with two boiling, scalding hot Greg's pasties and a bacon roll. What did we get, Fray? Nothing. A hot chocolate. Absolutely nothing. No, you got a hot drink, right? <laughs> Come here this morning. What do we get? Nothing. Why? I'm not a hot drink this morning. Yeah? You didn't bring us any. I didn't go to the shop. If I'd See, gone to it's the always shop, an excuse. If I'd gone to the shop, I would have bought you a hot chocolate and a bacon roll. But where is it then, Jess? He's got nothing to say now, is he? No, anyway, we're blithering now. Nothing to say. <laughs> he hasn't brought me my hot chocolate. You him, see, I've got to owe him a hot chocolate back now. You haven't bought that out of the kindness of your heart, Brad, have you? Well, yeah. I'm going to owe it back to you now. Yeah, but it'd be nice. <laughs> but you know what we're going to do now, Frey? We're going to have to lay some slabs now to buy him back his hot chocolate. So we better start earning some money. So we're going to put you on the hyper space. I'm going to with this cake, so I forgot to mention nips this before you hype the space. One of these. So we are, I don't know, about four degrees. Mm. So very, very important. If you're working outside, you can see it's frosty. If you're working outside and you're mixing sand and cement, really needs to be about three or four degrees. And we're using the frost proofer to the right measurements as well. So if you are working outside, your deal wire, do not mix sand and cement below three or four degrees. And please put the frost proofer in it as well, because it just protects it makes it set a bit quicker so when the night comes and it drops again you are having a little bit of protection so we'll put you on the hyperspace
Right, little update, show you where we are. We've got all the patio in up there now, all cut in. We've got that step there, laid on the concrete base that we laid, so that suffices for that. So that's all ready to rock and roll. Um, I'll go through that with you again, but we spoke to the client and they've chosen what they want, gave them a couple of options. We'll go through that again. So we've got this manhole to do, so we've bedded that on, cut a couple of bricks um, around the existing manhole brick chamber, just to, height and to raise the height of it. And um, we're gonna cut it all in now and we'll show you what it's like when it's finished. There we are, as if by magic. One manhole cover, or one recess manhole cover. In, done, shake it all about. Happy days. So just putting this step on now. So what we've done, look, right, we've put these risers on and we've mixed up some Mapai tile adhesive and that goes off like super glue. You'll never get that off, much better than sand cement. So we've glued them on with the tile adhesive. That's the blocks we put in the other day. We've put a, a, a MOT type one base in there and then all you need to do is just your four and one mix, sand and cement in there and what we're doing is we're following the path of the patio as well up through into the step you just bear it out there we are just bed that out like that so what we'll do now we'll, we'll put some slurry on the back of the slab so we've slurried this up now all it is you buy this in the builders merchants this slurry it's just called paving, paving primer or paving slurry. Just go to builders, merchants, ask for paving slurry. Just put it on the back. It's like an SBR. We just sim similar to SBI. You just put it on the back like we've done. Put loads on there, and that now will adhere to the some of the cement that's down there. So we've bedded it up. We just put that on top of there now. Now this is a lot of feel with this because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get this to touch the riser underneath. So, I've put my bed in, you can see that's higher. So again, eyes and feel. Well, I can hear that, I don't know if you can hear that on the camera. You can, you can hear that that's touching, that slab there. That's what we want. And then across the top, just make sure that's level. And then the other key thing is what you want to do when you lay this when you're laying this you want the water to come this way you don't want it to go back towards the house so just lay your spirit level just so it's off bubbles so any water that goes on here now runs off and that's basically it we'll carry on with this now we have got some more risers over there which we'll show you in a minute so there's the steps i said i'd explain them to you so we've gone for one step we were going to bring another step out to where my foot is there um, and reduce the riser on it but the problem is it would have hindered that entrance and it would have just eaten too much into the patio. So we said to the client, you know, do you just want to go for one riser? So I think, what's that riser there, Brad? I can't remember, it's about 200, isn't it? 200 mil, yeah. 200 mil, I think 150's ideal, but we've gone 50 mil extra. So we tried to share it out between the two. So they're happy, so that's the story behind that. That's what we've done. So that we've also followed the pattern look on there. So the pattern goes straight through into the slab. We've got a bit of mess about, a bit of little shavings to do on it and cutting to do, but we're onto this over here now. And uh, onto the risers over here. Well, we've done most of them, I'll just show you. We put them on again with the tile adhesive, the map eye, through to here. Might at the corner. And then we've done that into there. But we've got, again, we've got a few little trimmings to do with them. We had shavings down and alterations to do before we grout it. But it's getting there. Eh? It's looking good. Client's happy, which is the main thing. You happy, Brad? Always happy. He's always happy. I'm always happy. So there we are. Job done. Well, not job done. Almost job done. Right, it's Friday, and we got the curse of the small square again. So if you look down here, I'll show you some of them now. You can see that those small squares are bigger than the small rectangle that's up against it. I mean, you're looking at about, what, three, maybe four millimetres. But when you look at the whole thing, and it, it probably can't see it on the camera, but when you look at the whole thing and you hear, let's zoom you out a little bit, you know, you can just see that that one side of it is really, really bad in terms of the thickness of the joint. I mean, there's a particularly bad one there, look. I mean, we've got a nice 
you know, 10 mil joint there. And then when we come up to there, you've got like a, a five mil, four mil joint. Now that's the difference. You know, it's nice and straight there on that side. And then look at the difference between the size of the slabs. The curse of the small square and Indian sandstone. So I'm not happy with it. Really, I'm not happy with it. You know, we could just grout it and then the grout would probably hide it a little bit, but that's not what we do. I'm, I'm, I'm really not happy with it at all. So, you know, there's another one there, look. Same bloody thing. I mean, why do they keep sending these small squares so much bigger? I mean, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna count how many we gotta cut, right? I'm gonna do that off camera now and come back to you. And I'm, me and Brad are gonna do it together and cut them all off. I get it right, and I'm going to work out how much time it costs us, it's going to take us to do it. And the other thing is, before we grout in as well, I've noticed something else. So always have a check before you grout. This one here, yeah, this one is just a little, I must have hit this one down with the hammer, and in doing it, that one must have come up. So that's a little bit proud, so I'm going to have to take that off and redo it. So before you go putting your grout in system in, have a little walk round, have a little check, make sure you're happy. If there's any little trimming, any little ones you need relaying or anything that's amiss, do it now. Because if your grout goes in, then, uh, you know, you can still do it, but it's going to be a lot more difficult then, isn't it? So, right, we'll get on with it. We'll count them up. Right, I've done that now. It took me about half an hour. So, half an hour on my wages. You're probably looking about 900 quid, boys. Maybe, maybe a bit more than that. Maybe about £3.50 for half an hour for me. Um, no, it's, it's probably, you know, it's taking us about half an hour. So you're probably looking in, you know, it's, it's cost about a tenner, something like that to do it. But I blitzed it, I didn't mess about. But that's typically what, what I've had to cut off, these small squares. So it's so bloody annoying, it really, I'm going to swear then, it really does my head in that we've got to cut all that off. But that will show you, I've done, I've done that on every single square, right the way through. I mean, what I did, as you know, without boring you, is I laid the, this to a line here, so whatever the overlap was, was this. So we've cut that off all on this side, and I think once that's jointed now, that's just going to look a million dollars. That was bugging me. But um, manufacturers of this Indian sandstone has been going on for years and years and years. Cut the bloody things properly, and then we won't have to cut them, will we? There we go. Right, here we go then. Flow point time. So we just washed all this patio off now. We got a special order come through on the internet. We got the charcoal flow point this time, so slightly darker. So what we'll do is shut up because it's 20 past two. We've got to get it to set and we've got to get it all cleaned off. So uh, yeah, squeaky bum time. So we're going to get on with it and just do it. So I'll set you up on a hyperspace. struggled with this one. We, we, we mixed how many bags we mixed? Four bags, wasn't it? Mixed four bags, whacked it all down. And then because of the weather, we're in January, I think it's January the 28th today, it's about eight degrees and it's just struggling to go off. So there we are. Where are we? So it's a lot darker now this product than what we're used to. Which I think sets this off really really nice. So we're gonna get that off. We haven't done the model. But do the manual separate, going into set so you can't get it back up, excuse me. So you can hear the panic in my voice. So I'm gonna get off, we'll show you what it's like at the end. Right, top tip for you when you're doing your flow point, don't flow point around the manual cover because it'll get welded in and you'll never get it out. And we, we've done it, we got it out, but it was an absolute nightmare. So lesson learned. So what we've done now, look, is we flow pointed all around the manual, but we haven't actually flow pointed the manhole. So all this flow point in there now, we'll jet wash all that out, give it a good clean, put it back and then regroup on Monday and flow point the manhole, which is this lid bit, 
separate and then when we put it down you won't have any flow points um, impeding getting it back up if the customer needs to a later date so Brad's just jet washing all the black haze off the top now um, time's knocking on it's getting dark temperature's dropping but um, there we are everything's black but it's looking good a lot of work's gone into this I think it's looking really nice and there's a gamble to put the, uh, the black in but I think it's gamble paid off. I think that looks really, really nice. Really pleased with it. So there we are. Have a nice weekend. We'll regroup and see you again on Monday. So there we are. Patio finished. All job done. All the risers done on the sides there, look. Manholes in. All the flow points in. And we use charcoal on this one, as we said. So that's how the, uh, the risers are finished up there, look. So that's, a, that's the Indian sandstone in, done, dry. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to wet it with a hose and I'm going to show you what the colours do when it's wet because Indian sandstone when it's dry is one colour and then when it's wet it's a different colour. So you kind of get two patios in one. So make your mind up. Some people like it like this and I'll show you what it looks like when it's wet now. So there we go. Indian sandstone wet. Let me know in the comments below which one you prefer. I don't mind. I like both. And don't forget now, well we haven't said, but part two is coming. So this is part one, this is the uh, Indian sandstone patio. Part two is coming of the install of the artificial grass, which you can just about see at the bottom of there. So if you want to see how that was installed, then um, next video in part two of this project. So get tuned and get watching that video next. So there we are, that's this job done. I really like this, Marshall's Town Gate. Really, really nice in a random pattern. I think it's lovely. I think the, the product is a very, very nice product. So let me know what you think. Stay, stay uh, safe and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Cheers.